Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Sunday Night News and Nonsense Report. Sinner, for short. This is Sinner number... <laughs> uh, yes, that's my sound effects guru there in South America, Florida. That is my co-host, Spatry, again. Oh, jeez. Does he really have to be the co-host, Tanya? I guess so. I think he does. He's just okay. too good. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. I really needed that, Tanya. But no, this is Sinner number seven. Lucky seven. Roll of the dice. Maybe if we get lucky, Tanya Spatry will leave. No, no, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But uh, uh, I think that's going to be a real crapshoot for that happens. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Welcome once again to Sinner number seven, where we talk about news items, tidbits, and of course, just a wee bit of nonsense. Right, Spatry? Just a wee bit. I actually, I didn't drink any coffee today. I, believe it or not, I only had one cup of coffee. I mean, one? Uh, yeah, only one. Yeah, oh. so. Um, cool. And, folks, IG just jumped online. Let's see if we can reel him in. Spatry, go ahead and reel him in if you can. I got my fishing pole, and I'm going to reel them in real good for you. Hey, speaking of fishing, you know, um, I just went fishing. Um, I went fishing last week, you know, yeah, yeah. and I got this really good technique for catching lots of fish. You just light up a stick of dynamite and you yeah. throw it in the lake and, and all the fish come up. It's really cool. It was great for a barbecue when you got all the family, family reunion and all that other stuff. You know, so bring some TNT, keep that in the tackle box, folks, and you'll catch yourself to lots of fishing. So you had a <laughs> real dynamite day fishing, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tanya, do you do any fishing? No, but I think I'm going to try to take up this dynamite action. Sounds pretty exciting to me. Uh, I'm TNT. It's yes. dynamite. Hi, IG. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. I just feel like I dropped in a whole bunch of rednecks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks uh, I'm glad you said it <laughs> yeah, uh, not me uh, actually I really need to go now bye no, no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> welcome aboard IG we actually start officially recording like three minutes ago but welcome aboard uh, to another <laughs> <laughs> welcome to, uh, to another Sinner report IG since we have enough do you want to do this Linux A team slash Sinner report or yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Welcome to yet another Linux A team. And today we have Total OS Today, Tanya Data, also known as the Sadman Girl, and Infinitely Galactic. Uh, hang on. My right speaker just blew again. Spatcher, you got to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have officially... Yeah, go ahead. Too bad Crack. the word. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another uh, Linux A Team slash Sinner report. Since we have all the experts here, but see, with this nonsense report tonight, Spatry, if we go overboard, we may be able to debunk the fact that we are um, experts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have various news items, and by the way, Tanya, I know it's been a while. Welcome back. I know you've been busy. We've missed you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I missed you guys, too. I know. I mean, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> Here, okay. let me toss you some tissues. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I mean, let, let me dry my eyes. Oh, I feel so much better. Welcome back, sysadmin girl. And I Thank love you. the name Tanya Data. That sounds like... A female Terminator. I must terminate oh, yeah. that time. I'm really badass, really. <laughs> cool. So, uh, let's see. Spatry, you mentioned something about Google Chrome. Get started for us, if you would, please. Well, you'll remember in last the last Sunday night news and nonsense, we talked about how uh, Microsoft is going to be forcing Internet Explorer on all the people that purchase tablets. Yes. Well... I just saw this report on the MuckTeeWare website stating that Google Chrome has beaten Microsoft's Internet Explorer as the most popular web browser worldwide for the first time. Congratulations. Even beating out, even beating out Firefox, which I wow. personally like. Yeah. So maybe, so it just, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, geez, these people over at, uh, 
Washington must be chewing the leather off of their shoes after reading this. Ah, so let's force IE on them on the tablets, and then we'll be able to bump those, uh, bump the demographics up. But let's face it, Microsoft Internet Explorer stinks. Nobody wants it. Well, there are better browsers. Firefox is better. Google Chrome's better. Opera's better. Come on. I thought the last one really wasn't that bad. I mean, is 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 anybody going to save me here, or I'm or am I going to save? I could it be there. We had a lot of stuff we couldn't use at my job because IE just didn't support it. IE nine didn't work. We had to keep him at eight or put on Chrome or Firefox. Oh. Just IE wasn't there for it. So oh. yeah, so I'm thrilled that finally IE gets bumped off the platform here, and you know, because Chrome is like was the underdog. So it's nice to see them taking over. Like I was saying before, IE is totally crappy. No, but, um, well. <laughs> IG, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, IE9 wasn't that bad as far as, you know, compared to the other browsers in performance and that. But, yeah, compatibility was a huge issue. And, I mean, come on, Google is Google. So they're going to, you know, they're going to end up taking over eventually. And it has full HTML5 support, Chrome. So... Yeah, it's very true. And I mean, that was one of the big things that they were pushing with IE9 as well, that that had, you know, HTML5 support. And it did, but, you know. Yeah. Well, for me, the biggest news last week, kind of for me, that topped it all. And Spatry, if you start snickering, I'm going to kill you. I had to once again delete <laughs> ATI drivers. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, I... Stable or horse stable? Uh, completely horse... Blah, 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 stable. <laughs> Let me explain what happened briefly. I updated, um, upgraded from Ubuntu 11.10 to 1204, my main desktop that I'm using now. And it went fine. No glitches. Super. So I thought, well, let me try ATI drivers again. And to my surprise, they installed, and it was stable. No glitches, no tearing of the video, no crashes. Great. But it, it didn't really improve performance. If anything, it was sucking a lot of RAM. So last night, I was doing a review, and I just had a feeling something's not right. So I checked my system monitor, and it read over 2 gigs of RAM usage. I'm like, whoa. So I thought, no, 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 I'm going to delete the ATI drivers rebooted, now I'm fine. But then it somehow it broke Kazam screencaster because it would record two seconds and then stop. Two seconds and uh. then stop. And I didn't know how to fix it. And I know I know Kazam works out of the box. I know it yes. does. So after an hour fiddling I thought horse stable to this, I went into Windows seven, deleted Ubuntu twelve oh four reinstalled it without the proprietary drivers and everything is just dynamite so once again toss today and ati drivers are, are divorced they will be it will be in the papers tomorrow uh but no but um <laughs> it, it, look if somebody came to my door and says hey uh, we're from ubuntu development can we give you five hundred dollars to test ati drivers i would say i tell you what sir let me give you five hundred dollars to go see a doctor okay goodbye <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of dynamite are you going to take some when you go fishing next time <laughs> <laughs> i i've i've thought about but i'm afraid i might <laughs> blow, up, blow up the boat <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, Tanya, you and I briefly were talking before in pre-chat about a, uh, I know you live in California where there's a lot of traffic, right? Still, I'm Oh, man. non-stop traffic. I could live on the freeway. Wow. To my house right there in the center. <laughs> yeah, the last time I was, and by the way, I have some cool stories I have to tell just you what happened to me in 2003 in San Francisco. But before I do that, the Toyota Motor Company, a terrific company, I, I actually drive a Toyota, fantastic, reliable car. As they do I. Oh, you do? That was my yes, first indeed. car, last, me too. Nice. Uh, let's see. Toyota last week announced they are um, coming out, marketing or selling a new Toyota RAV4. I believe that's a small SUV, if I recall. It's yeah, they're super cute. Okay. Um, they, this one's going to be all electric. Uh, no more gas station, which is great. It's kind of pricey. It's about $50,000. Now, it is pricey, but look, it's all electric, it's Toyota, they make good products. I don't have a problem with that. My problem is, on a full... It comes with ATI drivers? 
if that's yeah, the case, us, they will agree with this. Uh, nope, it's out the window. <laughs> yeah, I certainly hope not. But uh, nice we are going to terminate the uh, Toyota with ATI drivers. Yes, Rav <laughs> is terminated. Goodbye. Um, it has a limited range. Okay. I don't have a problem with being all electric. I don't even have a problem with the price because I'm sure it's a top-notch vehicle, as they usually all are, okay? The problem is mileage. You can go on the full charge 100 miles. Now, for a car that's 50 Gs, give or take, and you put that into the equation of 100 miles per charge, it's, it just doesn't, doesn't sound right. It's almost like me downloading the latest Ubuntu, and all that I can get is 100 hours. Then it stops. <laughs> I have to re-download it again to keep going. So, so, Tanya, you live out there out west where it's really bad traffic. How do you see it? Yeah, I don't know about that. 100 miles, I feel like I'll be charging it every single day or like every other day, and I have so many other things I need to do, sitting around charging my car, where, and I won't be able to go out? <laughs> I don't think so. So, I, I see your point. So, look, I would say if the car could get at least, maybe, Tanya, I would say maybe 300 miles per charge. Would that be more, like, marketable? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Then I don't have to worry about it, you know. People around here have enough things to do, and no one walks here. I don't know if you realize that. In Southern <laughs> California... No one walks anywhere. I mean, if I have to go two blocks, I hop in my car and I drive over there, you know? So none of us walks. It's really I bad. noticed that last time I was in San Francisco. And let me tell you guys a quick story. Uh, this last time I was I was in Fisherman's Wharf. I was visiting, and um, I rented a convertible. Very nice Chrysler product at the time. But I wasn't really too familiar with the street. So I dropped off my cousin, who I was traveling with, at one of the restaurants near the Golden Gate Bridge. And I said, well, look, just, just find a seat. And I'll drive around, try to get a parking space. Good luck, right? <laughs> well, right, Tanya. So I, I remember this like it was yesterday because it was like, do something now. I'm driving around, driving. I'm getting really perturbed. I can't find a space. So I remember making a left turn, I believe, driving. And all of a sudden, I see a bunch of cars coming at me. I then realized oh. it was a one-way one -way street. So I... <laughs> There was no time to think. It was like, do something. I hit the car reverse. I pulled the James Bond. I just reversed all the way to the intersection where it was green still, thank God. I pulled like a, a, like a spin, like what you would see in Fast and the Furious, you know, and kept on going. I was scared out of my pants, but so proud of myself that I pulled it <laughs> like I was shooting a movie, but it was awesome. <laughs> there is another concern with these cars, though. I mean, you're talking an electric SUV. Yes. What about the family vacation? What are you going to do? Take them to the park? Well, <laughs> I... You're not going to go very far on 100 miles. Now, it stands to reason, though, if, if a car like this were to become popular, obviously they'd have to have charging stations where people yes. can get a quick charge or something like that. Maybe they even have optional extra battery packs so that you can get that extra bit of juice to get you to the next station that sort of thing but uh, i don't see where this is practical ig what's yeah. what's the feeling like in australia yeah i mean how do you see it um well i mean we we do have a lot of hybrid cars um with okay. you know that 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 uh you know somewhere between electric and but they still use uh petrol or gas um, but as far as like all electric uh, cars, it would almost be useless in Australia because, um, you know, it's not the, the, the population centres are so spread out from each other that, um, mm -hmm. yeah, as you said, a family vacation would just be ridiculous because you'd be like, honey, where did I put the spare battery pack? And, you know, <laughs> you'd, you'd, be, you'd be having a roadside holiday. Uh, it seems like what we're marketing here is basically a, a second car, if, if you could afford an expensive a second car that's quick driving to the grocery store and back. Right. My I'm question just, would be yeah. though, how how expensive would the you know would your electric bill be if you were charging up a car like that as opposed to the, the cost of the of the gas? From what I understand, when the Nissan Leaf came out last year, that it's all electrical. It's actually very cheap. I don't have the numbers in front of me, in front of me, but I remember looking it up, and it's it's very cheap. It's definitely cheaper than going to the gas station. The problem is you can't go that far. But in terms of charge or per kilowatt hour or however that works, it's not bad at all. And I'm assuming that okay. 
Yeah. So, so Toyota, uh, we, me, IG, and Sis Admin Girl love your product, but the fifty thousand dollar hundred mile car. Sorry. Put it next it, to the IE bin. Yeah, but I've got an idea. Yeah. You know those generate the storm generators. Just keep one of those in the trunk. Fill it with gas. And, you know. <laughs> 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 and there we go. Driving. <laughs> We're back with the chicken and the egg problem. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I give Toyota credit for at least, you know, expanding their product line for those of us who have so much money, like Mark Zuckerberg, Berg, oh, man. Who, who just got married. Uh, of course, his Facebook went public, and uh, I wish he got married to a very nice uh, young lady. I think her name is Priscilla. I caught the name. I guess they met in college. So I wish I wished a happy couple, many faces, and many books. And, yeah, congratulations. Uh, what's that? And, uh, yeah, just congratulations to them. They seem like a nice couple, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can also read the prenuptial agreement on the Facebook page, right? I don't think there is one. <laughs> There's no prenup. I don't know. I don't know how much this guy's worth. I'm sure it's in the multi-millions, if not billions, but no prenup. Um, I don't know about that. That's a little risky, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Facebook. I think Facebook as a company just uh, hit the stock exchange like in the last week or something. Oh, so. it started off with an explosion, Spatry. Then I guess it fizzled. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know. But hey, look, I wish him the best of. But I mean, I mean, Mark Mark Zuckerberg was instantly like millions of dollars richer, like when 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 they right. jumped on. Right. So you know, that that's a good wedding present. <laughs> right. Well, speaking, I heard an interesting yeah. statistic that there's more people on Facebook today than it, that were total people on the internet when Facebook was created. Really? Yeah, I was like, that's crazy. Like everyone and their mother and grandmother and dog is on Facebook. Do you use it's Facebook? True. Bit, estimates are yeah. by the end of the estimates are by the end of the year there'll be about a billion people on uh, on Facebook. Yeah. Wow. Because there's there's about 850 million at the moment. That's a lot of faces. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking the of the largest database of humans. Well, I think Facebook may have some competition, folks. I just got this off the newswire like right before we started. Microsoft is launching its own social network. Oh, uh, no. Assuming, oh, no. <laughs> assuming you have time between the Facebook and Google and the LinkedIn and the 6,000 other ones out there, but but they're Over calling the it and the tweeters, yeah. Uh, it is called, let me see, it is called, oh, how clever, I get it. It is called so.cl, so she'll get it, dot com, I'm assuming. Uh, it's brand new. Um, it says here, so, social is an experiment in open search. Uh, that means your searches on social are viewable by other social users and will also be available to third parties. This is hot off the presses, so do we have room for another social network? Absolutely not. Yeah, we've got too many of them. Well, I don't think already. anyone Yeah. I don't think anyone can hold up, you know, the throne forever. So at some point someone is gonna beat out Facebook. I mean it could be next year, it could be ten years, but at some point someone is gonna beat them out. Just the way Facebook took over MySpace, someone's gonna take over Facebook. Well I mean and yeah, I think and from at least from my perspective, uh, Google Plus is a far superior social networking system. But it, it, yeah. it it just doesn't have the it just doesn't have the user base. I Not mean yet. so yeah. It, yeah, not yet. So, I mean, in my opinion, if if anyone was going to be taking over Facebook status, it would be Google Plus. They would be the I, I they would be the network to do it because they have so many services tied into it already with Gmail and Picasa yes. Web and all of that other stuff. So, yes. I mean, yeah, I mean that uh, and Microsoft. Oh my goodness, it'll just be like the next um, Bing uh, web search. Yeah, I and, don't know. This is brand new. You know, I hate to hate to you know, rate something or, or predict unless I try it. So Very I really don't know. I'm just going to be fair about this for now and see what happens. But this is brand new. I may give it a shot. I mean, I, I just don't. I would have to say what you guys are saying and Tanya, that it's, it's no, there, are, there are too many and, and this will crash and burn. But honestly, who really knows? So, yeah. Microsoft need to figure out a way that they can create another game, not try and join everybody else's game far too late. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, well, speaking of games, for and that's all, history yeah. repeating itself. There. Yes. yes. 
Um, you mentioned games, IG. Speaking of games, I can't wait for the next. My son and I cannot wait for the next Halo Four. The next. Here we go again. The next <laughs> trilogy series. A nice tie in there, since IG mentioned games. There's a, for all the Halo fans. You can preload, pre preload, uh, pre order, not preload, pre order the legendary or the special edition Halo Four for only a hundred dollars. I will not be doing that. <laughs> Uh, there's a bunch of extra goodies. And uh, let me ask you a question. So sure. Yeah. You get the you you spend a hundred dollars to get yeah. the first two levels of the new game, and yeah. then you have to buy it once it ships. Also, I don't know what the what will all be offered in the special. I'm assuming a special packaging, maybe a special. You get a special poster, maybe an extra disc. I don't know. I mean... You might get a helmet of Master Chief or something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, a something helmet. collectible. Yeah, which yeah, I can look. Okay. People collect Star Wars and Star Trek, so why not? It's not that far-fetched. Right? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, but yeah, I'm more into the... I mean, I mean I'm more into the books and the music, you know, and the mythology of it. It's, it's really right now, over the more than 10 years, it's, it's really up there, I think, with the mythology of Star Wars and all that stuff, because... Only you the power of the dark side. <laughs> I will terminate Darth. Where is he? <laughs> well, the Tell mass... me that's not an app on your phone or something. <laughs> no, I got this little Darth Vader statue sitting next to my computer, and I pushed the button. I find your lack of faith. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, uh -huh. okay. well, like we said, this is a family show, something like Sesame Street. So yeah, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, what other news items do we have there, uh, Darth? Uh, oh, um, there's all kinds of news. Um, Red Hat celebrates 10 years of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Why not bring Linux to the table? So, yes, Red Hat, the world's most successful open source company, celebrates the 10th anniversary of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And, of course, Red, we all know that Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux powers many of the servers worldwide, and a lot of uh, corporations cool. are using it to uh, power their intranets and that sort of thing. So that's, that's good news. Hmm, good on them. They deserve it. Well yeah. done, Red Hat. Yeah. Except yeah. Fedora is not very good. They need to do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interestingly yeah. enough, I tried uh, Red Hat um, many, many, many years ago um, when um, it was relatively new and it was very difficult to install. Um, and uh, but the thing is, it didn't have much driver support, and I couldn't get it to work on my uh, home-built computer and that sort of thing. So I didn't stick with it. But um, I, I remember it used the first version of uh, the GNU, the GNOME, and uh, that sort of thing. I, I don't remember a whole lot about it other than the fact that I was quite aggravated. Once I finally did get it installed, I couldn't do much with it. But, um, yeah, and I do agree, yeah, that Fedora, which is uh, essentially, um, it's my understanding that the Fedora is um, pre-Red Hat stuff. So everything new gets tested out in Fedora, and then and then Red Hat will take all the uh, ob objects and software that people are using and pull them into uh, Red Hat. So um, yeah, well, I yeah. don't consider Fedora a uh, an operating system Linux based for newbies. Uh, personally, Spatry, I hope they keep. Going, if if anything, for the wonderful, colorful names they're coming out with. Uh, yeah. Of course, you know, Fedora 17 supposedly is is going to be called Beefy Miracle, and uh, I don't know where they got that, but uh, uh, I figured Tanya they, would get a and, chuckle and, out of it. Yeah, yeah, and they and and you're right. They do have they do have the picture of this uh, cartoony looking hot dog thing. And that sort of thing, but I still say that they need to do some simple modifications to the uh, graphics to, you know, really uh, yes. <laughs> make it stand out a little bit more. Oh, it's standing out now, sure, but uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is that. Well, okay, let's. Well, speaking, of, let's move on some more. To some more. Yeah, you don't want me. To, you don't want me to get going on that one. No, either. no, this is a fair. You'll have to yeah. censor me out again. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, yes, Tanya. Yeah. 
it's a family show. No, but it's great that Red Hat's doing so well, you know, because I use Red Hat every day. It's an amazing operating system, very stable. It can stay up for a year, no problem, don't have to restart it. So, you know, kudos to them. Yeah. Well, well so Linux Mint 13, uh, release candidate, is out. Uh, people have been waiting to see what the next one is going to look like. I believe there will be two uh, default versions, if you will, Mate. Or somebody said it's pronounced mate or matey. I mean, do I just call it sausage? Come on. But I call it mate. <laughs> uh, that's what I download. Now, there'll be two versions, mate and cinnamon. Now, personally, guys and Tanya, I think they should combine it and call it Linux Mint Cinemate. But there, uh, yeah. Now, that is a cool idea. Yeah, it, it sounds like a coffee creamer, but no. Um, uh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Doesn't it? No, then you'd have to say cinemate. Cinemate. <laughs> hey, that's kind of like latte. <laughs> I, gee, I like that. Cinemate. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a nice ring to it. I definitely would vote for that. <laughs> yes. Linux Mint, are you listening? Cinemate. Yeah. And we want a piece of the action if it sells well. But um, <laughs> Mate or Mate, and there'll be. I downloaded Mate because. Okay. I, I downloaded Mate, excuse me, Mate, Cine, Linux Mint 13 Mate, because according to the blog, they still believe that Cinnamon still has still a few bu bugs that needs to be worked out more so than Mate. So I downloaded Mate, plus Mate does not require a hefty 3D graphics card or a lot of RAM. And I installed it on my workhorse. ThinkPad uh, T60, I believe, with just a gigabyte of RAM, dual core, but just a gigabyte of RAM, and I dual boot Windows 7, and Linux Mint 13 Mate is awesome. It's zippy. It's still somewhat customizable. You can right-click on the panel bar and add applets. Boy. Yeah, I missed that. And you can use Compiz with it, too. Yeah, so for people out there who have an older, uh, or I guess even a new computer, I don't see why not. Check out, I mean, I'm sure both are fine, but according to the Mint team, Mate will have less bugs, at least right now. But I have it, I love it, and um, yeah. And then uh, just two days ago, Zorn OS 6 yes. finally has been released after they say a year in development, guys. Tanya, and uh, one year, uh, and they just passed two million users. Users, so congratulations to Zorin. Right. Yeah, mm. they deserve it. Uh, now, what desktop is that going to have on it? They have what's called right. the Zorin desktop. Now, what they did, they don't like. I guess like Mint team, uh, Linux Mint team, they don't like units here or the GNOME three shell or anything else. They what they did. I took a brief look at it, and I will do a, a review this week. It seems stable enough, even though it's not quite final. But they took the the uh, the AWN doc panel doc, um, um, Avant window man, Avant navigator, yes. navigator, and they used that as their default uh, panel doc, and they're calling it Zorin Desktop. But it's still for for those people out there who still like the look and feel of Zorin because it looks like Windows Seven. This still has that look. It's been updated to the GNOME 3 uh, version, but without the GNOME 3 desktop interface and nor Unity or, or any, any stuff like that. And I've been testing it. It looks and feels great. Yeah, and I it's, think for the yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for the for the user base that they that they're going for and and that whole idea of being a gateway to Linux for Windows users, yes. I, I reckon they did a really good job because. Uh, you know, they've still got a lot of the features in there that uh, that Ubuntu 12.04 has. They've still got a lot of the um, the GNOME 3 features, but it still looks and behaves almost exactly the way that, that Zorin OS 5 did. So, I mean, you know, well done on them. And, and if they can get yeah, a few bugs sorted nice. out, because I did, I did run across a few, if they okay. can get those sorted out by the final release, which they will because they're good like that, um, then, you know, I think it'll be a very good operating system to point people to. Okay, now this is a final release of this ship, isn't it? No, it's a release candidate. Yeah. Oh, it's a release candidate. Okay, gotcha. So we are, I mean, I was going to tell you guys or tell my, uh, you know, viewers later on this week, but here's a spoiler in case you didn't know. Zorin OS 6 is stable. Surprise! But uh, <laughs> And so is Linux Mint Mate. I haven't tested Cinnamon yet. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's fine, but uh, yeah. It is Most, good, yeah. Cool. 
Um, Tanya, what do you dual boot? I dual boot uh, Ubuntu usually, and I do have a Mint ah, dual boot perfect. as well. And I have a Mac OS X and Windows dual boot. So I have a few machines. So <laughs> cool. Whichever one I feel like that day, I hop on. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is the most user-friendly, Mac, Windows 7, or variations of Linux? What do you say? Um, The most user-friendly? For a newbie. For, oh, for a newbie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, would go with, um, I would go with Ubuntu, actually, okay. with the Unity desktop. I feel like a new user might actually enjoy it. I mean, an old-time user who, who was used to, especially using the command line a lot, because <laughs> Linux came from a lot of, you know, kind of programmers, really techie people. Maybe they didn't appreciate it, but I think someone brand new to it might be okay with the Unity desktop. Okay. Yeah. What do you? What is your preference? Uh, me personally, I use uh, Mint. I use uh, Mint a little bit more than I use a lot of other things, just because I use a lot of command line stuff. So, and the Mac OS X, I use that too. So. Ig, and what do you? Yeah. Command line, so. Okay. I use a lot of, used to it. What about you, Ig? Yeah. Yeah, I've spent the most time uh, that I've spent on any one desktop environment with Ubuntu 12.04 ever since like the beta one. It's been the primary system on my laptop, which is what I'm using most of the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I also have um, used Mint quite a bit. I've actually been using Magia on my desktop for the last uh, probably two weeks or so, and I've been uh, and actually KDE for me works a lot better on a desktop setting than it does on a laptop. I got no idea why, but I think it's got something to do with the um, because everything's quite small in KDE, like the the window buttons and stuff like that. Uh -huh. It's kind of frustrating to try and poke around with that with a, like a touchpad, whereas with a keyboard and mouse on a on a big monitor, um, KDE works great. So uh, I'm I'm thinking I might I might stick with uh, some sort of KDE distribution on my desktop. But yeah, definitely Ubuntu Unity for everyday stuff on my laptop. I just can't beat it. I must say I have completely fallen in love with Ubuntu with the dash and now the HUD and the search and the keyboard <laughs> functions. I'm I in know, love. Right? I'm all shook that up. That's pretty yeah. cool, I got to say. Yeah, Tanya, we gotta, Tanya, we got to get you hooked on Arch. You know, I have used Arch, actually. <laughs> really? Actually, wow. yeah. Arch and Gintu, if I tell people who are really uh, technical and they want to learn more about computers, I say if you really want to learn about the OS, use Arch. Or uh, Ginto. Yeah. You know, and that's, Do those two installations. And believe it or not, this is news for a lot of you guys out there. Everybody knows I love my Compiz desktop, but you know what? Um, in the past, uh, in the past few uh, weeks, two weeks, I think it is since I've installed Blender, I've actually been running my computer in OpenBox, and uh, I'm doing. Uh, you know, and I, li I love OpenBox. I like it because it's fast, snappy, it's lightweight, and I can run all my multimedia applications. And a lot, as a lot of people who are following my show knows, I'm actually shifting my focus from doing reviews on distributions and that sort of thing. And I'm going to be strictly covering, a I'll still do a few reviews here and there, but I'm going to do a lot more reviews in multimedia, showing people how to harness the power of Linux to put together some sizzling multimedia presentations and that's from 3D modeling to video editing, audio editing, all those fun little things that you know that we that we all do just you know every time that we put a show together we do these things uh, special just effects about every stuff. day. Yeah. Special effects and that sort of thing and uh, and uh, you know I've even had a lot of my uh, viewers state that this is something they want to see that they want to be able to do these kind of things and there isn't enough people out there really uh, putting out uh, that kind of content. So I decided, you know, that would probably be a better focus for me because I have a true passion for it. And I cool. really love doing the multimedia presentations. And and uh, so uh, basically, and as everybody knows, I have a 300th episode coming up. And everybody knows I've got my little coffee mug with the, uh, uh, you know, with uh, Tux holding the fly swatter, chasing after the MSN butterfly. And so I decided to make 3D models out of all these elements and I'm actually going to put together a uh, Pixar-like animation and uh, well actually it isn't going to look like Pixar, it's going to look like something Spatry does but uh, <laughs> it should be interesting to say the least so cool. Um, but yeah um, in terms of desktops there are a lot of desktops to choose from I personally like the open box desktop uh, for you know uh, 
I, I pretty much only use the Compiz when I'm at the coffee shop showing off Linux to all my friends at the coffee shop. And that's Absolutely. That's what Compiz is made for. Exactly. And then when I'm sitting at home and I'm doing video editing, audio editing, 3D modeling, and that sort of thing, I'm running an open box, and I love it. And I never thought that open box would grow on me. Uh, I just, uh, you know, I just like its interface. It's great. Cool. Well, speaking of um, special effects, a little bit of uh, movie news, if I may. Uh, those of you who are... Right. Okay, why not? Why not? Let's do a little bit of nonsense. Well, the director Ridley Scott, the very worldwide respected Ridley Scott, a lot of great movies, of course, the first Alien movie, Thelma and Louise, Gladiator. He's finally, 30 years later, releasing a, I guess, prequel, sequel to the first classic Alien movie because uh, he waited 30 years for the right script. He's such a perfectionist, like like you, Spatry, you know. And wow. um, <laughs> uh, the movie is called Prometheus. It's being released yes. uh, June. And I can't wait. The previews look... I can't wait. Awesome. They look high-tech. They look, shall I say, stable and polished. Uh, he's a great director. He has an eye for what people like us would like to see and get our money's worth when going mm -hmm. to a movie. I remember the very first Alien seeing that in the theater and the classic, of course, the chest burster scene still. Yes. You know, yeah, many that... years later, that movie still holds up well. And this is before, you know, computer graphics and modeling and all, all that stuff. This was 1979. So and now, many years later, it is coming out Prometheus so if you if there are any uh, uh, really Scott fans or you know just want to go out and have a good time check out Prometheus and no the movie company is not paying me to endorse this I'm just saying this as a fan I love his movies mm -hmm. I love the gladiator stuff like that GI Jane I think he did that one of course Blade Runner yes Good Blade movie. Runner was a high tech movie. This is eighty one. They did a good job. movie. Good movie. So, and it's uh, still timeless. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Can still watch that one. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Tanya, what kind of movies do do you like to see? No, I'm actually really looking forward to that movie. I love sci fi, of course, cool. right? Cool. Remember the Matrix? Remember that when that came out? I think oh, I saw yes. it like times. Yeah. <laughs> IG, yeah. what do you watch? Ah uh, well, I mean, just after seeing the Avengers and um, and all that good. fun stuff with a group of friends, then uh, that was actually surprisingly good. Um, that they, they had they had any number of opportunities to make a hash of that film, uh, but they pulled it off pretty well, I reckon. And um, uh, all the banter between the uh, egocentric characters was uh, very entertaining. Yes. And um, yeah, I think they I think they did an incredible job. I think um, Batman and Spider Man movies, the other Superman ones coming out uh, this American summer, uh, I've got a lot to um, uh, a lot to live up to. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The uh, the latest edition of the Batman movies. What's it called? Um, the Dark Knight. But, uh, yeah. And I love that. I love the Dark Knight theme. I mean, they really took the because you'll remember the Batman movies with Arnold Schwarzenegger and all uh, Mr. Freeze. Yeah, yeah, you know. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Freeze and all that. Those looked so so fluffy and everything. <laughs> whereas, well, I mean, they look comical. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they look too cyberpunk fluffy. <laughs> and sort of these Dark Knight, these Dark Knight ones, they really. You know, put you know, put the meaning to that. Like, uh, like uh, for instance, there was this one scene where uh, Batman is interrogating the Scarecrow, and Spray gives the Scarecrow a taste of his own little uh, medicine, whatever that Spray was, and he's interrogating him, and they're showing the point of view of the Black Knight and everything, and he's this, de you know, Batman looks like a demon and everything. I just thought that was the coolest thing. You know, so um, it's certainly a lot more grittier, and I think I think yes. Christopher Nolan has a lot to, has a lot to do with that because he's a very um, uh, he's a, he's a very like a realistic kind of director. He wants to make people think, and right. and he doesn't just want to give people a summer blockbuster that they can sort of enjoy. But I think all of the Batman films, you know, thus far have been you know uh, ones with a lot more, more uh, sort of questionable motives and intents behind them, making the audience think a lot more. And also the music has been really edgy in all of them. Uh, like, um, the, the composer that they've got for, them, the, for the music of those movies is not your typical sort of, it's not your typical superhero music. 
Um, oh, here's another one that's coming out too. Um, yeah. Since we're on the topic, yeah. Uh, Tim Burton's releasing another movie, and uh, that one is uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched that uh, British uh, uh, soap opera from years ago. It was called Dark Shadows. Barnabas yes. Collins yes. And that sort of thing. Sure. Well, Tim Burton's releasing one with Johnny Depp as uh, as uh, I could see that uh, Barnabas Collins. That I gotta see because yeah, I, I lo- anything Tim Burton puts out is gonna be good. I figured you would like anything with the title with the word dark in it, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Hollywood seems to be on on a spending spree. I mean, John Carter, it cost mm-hmm. him like two hundred million dollars to make, and I think it made like a dollar seventy six at the box, you know, box <laughs> office. It, it bombed. Yeah, something uh, like that. Battleship, but apparently Disney got a lot of that back through um, through the Avengers, even though they're not actually in the credits, uh, okay. <laughs> which is weird. But anyway, I'm not sure how that financing you know thing works. But then the movie Battleship, which I haven't seen, I've heard good things. That one, I I think it's going to bomb. I don't know. It was just released, but they're on the spending binge. Binge, um, evidently throwing out. You know, here's what gets to me. Getting back to, to, to the Halo books and the mythology, they spend these hundreds of millions of dollars of movies that are questionable, but the brains at Hollywood cannot get together to toss in $100 million to make a Halo movie, which you know is going to work. I just thought I'd toss that in for all the, all the Halo fans. Yeah, that's very there. true. It's, I mean, I think, again, a lot of perfectionists, especially those who have been around the Halo mythology for a long, long time, they're wanting to get a perfect script, and they've been waiting for this perfect script for uh, literally years now. Uh, uh, you know, like I remember when the myths first started going around of a Halo movie, but it's been back and forth and forth and back and, you know, about I have a waiting suggestion. for this script because they want to. Because, okay. I mean, it's a passionate fan base, and I don't want to yes. mess it up the garbage uh, script. So, yeah. Right. But I have a suggestion, IG. Uh, whoever owns the rights, I guess Microsoft, here's my advice to Microsoft. Call, put these people all in, in, in a boardroom. Call Steven Spielberg. Call Ridley Scott. You know, maybe a couple other mm-hmm. guys. Put them, in, put them in a boardroom and talk about a script and just hash it out. Just, you know, toss out the ideas and get it done. It's not that difficult. You know, I mean, there are what? Yeah. Uh, how many games out? How many countless books? They can take that and just make a wonderful first script. But that's just my two cents on it. So, um, you know what? What I caught today in the movie news, a Chinese company is buying the AMC theater chain here in the States. Uh, (laughs) Apparently, there's... (laughs) Yes, Patrick, you could just take that any way you want. But uh, apparently, our movies that bomb here do better in China because I guess China has an appetite for American-made movies. Uh, I just hope when I go see the next, uh, you know, um, sequel to Terminator, instead of popcorn, I hope all they're not... You're going to be serving sushi. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You read my mind. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Because I know California... I thought of that. As soon as you said that, that's why I started snickering, because that's exactly what I was thinking. They're going to start serving serving sushi and rice. (laughs) Tanya, you live in California, Hollywood land. Would you have, uh, like, sushi... Flavored popcorn, if that was the case. Yes, they had <laughs> at the theater, I actually would buy some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah why not? No, I think it's interesting. So I think they would actually Halo making a Halo movie would be actually a brilliant idea. It has an amazing follow base, and these other games like God of War, these are like epic movies. Yes. Yes. So if they just take the time to like make a movie or epic games, they just take the time to make a movie out of it. I think since the the fan base is so huge, they'll do well. So do you play I don't know, games? I don't know why they don't do it. Uh-huh. Hmm? Do you play and- games? I watch people play games. I don't have the hand-eye coordination to, like, do okay. anything, honestly. <laughs> okay. And interestingly enough, most of these Hollywood movies are being made on Linux machines now. Yeah, oh. that was going to be my that next question fun. because it's because it just works, I guess. I don't know. And it's cheap. So. Speaking of questions, we had some questions, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We're getting close to the end here. So let's see. The question, I have two questions for the expert panel here. The first question is, um, if somebody wants to, okay, they have two drives, drive C and drive D. If somebody wants to install, say, Ubuntu on drive C, will it affect 
drive D, and I must say, according to the message I got, they have no intention of backing anything up. Go ahead. Okay, what do you? Yeah. Always. You should always back up. Um, and I, I got a question similar to that earlier this week, and I basically told the person I says, I says if I, I, I basically explained my scenario where I have an external drive and an internal drive, and when I went to install Arch or Ubuntu or any of these other Linux distributions, it only affect the drive that you tell it to install to. It will partition that drive, putting a swap file. And then uh, any uh, and any special drives, if you want, for instance, a, a segment for your your uh, for your system files, and then a segment for your home directory. I recommend that configuration personally, and I use that myself. But it will only affect that particular drive. That's that what I would. So when you said, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, I agree with him. You should always back up. No matter what, just on the safe side. But when he says drive, does he mean physical drives or actually C drive as a partition and D drive as another partition? And when you do the Linux installation, it does prompt you to format. So it will warn you. So you want to know exactly which partition or which device, okay, number. So devices are labeled. You need to know if it's like SDA or SDB or SDC or whatever it is. He needs to know that device path name guarantee. T if it's a physical device. If it's a separate partition, then when he goes in to create his uh, Linux file system, you know, with the swap, the directory, the slash, and the, the uh, slash, when he does that, it's going to have another directory that will have a, like a Windows file system type. So he has to make sure that Windows file system is the one he wants to keep. Exactly. Another good tip, and uh, another good tip is to manually, uh, you know, boot the live CD. Okay, and then just go ahead and create the partitions you want, Pres and and then the ins the Ubuntu installer will recognize that you've already made the partitions, and then it will install to those partitions, leaving your other file system intact. This is especially important if you're just using a single hard drive with two partitions. Yeah, um, I don't know if the question was, or when I got the message, was it a single hard drive with two separate partitions that he, he's calling C or D, or two separate hard drives, which I think would be safer, right, or not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it really depends on the user. I mean, safer, if he reads a manual and knows what he's doing, then it's, yeah, safe, but, you know, that's why it's backup. Clonezilla is the easiest backup software there is. Just back it up. Just take a second. You won't regret it. <laughs> and then, you, you you know, you're not worried when you do your installation. Yeah, I concur. Okay. IG, do you want to add something or we'll move on to the next question? Um, no, what you all said. Okay. Uh, the next, the last question I received and uh, something like uh, this person has Kubuntu or one of the Ubuntu's. He installed the Cinnamon desktop uh, you know extension and he doesn't like it he wants to remove it and I cautioned him anytime you install a desktop environment on top of your standard one there's always a risk of breaking your system so if you're willing to continue I said first of all try to well I said basically try going to the synaptic package manager now he said that didn't work and it didn't work going through the Ubuntu software center so I know there is a way to do it through the terminal, but off the top of my head, I don't know. Do you know? S someone know? I actually just looked it up. So the exact command is sudo apt-get hyphen hyphen purge space auto remove space cinnamon. So that's the exact command he needs to run to remove the cinnamon desktop. Somebody put that in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When I edit this, I'll, I'll go back. It's towards the end, so I should remember that. Cool. So that should now. Of course, the question is, when it purges it, will it break a system? I'm saying there's a possibility because it happened to me once. So um, My suggestion is this. Back up your home directory. Yeah. Copy all your files in your home directory just in case something bad happens. That way, if you find that you end up having to reinstall Ubuntu, and that sort of thing. You can restore your home directory and have all your settings intact. You'll at least save yourself um, a, a quite a bit of time because then you'll have all your user preferences saved, just in case. 
Uh, sound advice, to say the least. So if that person or persons or whoever is listening, the number one advice that we can give you, and this is even using Windows or I, I, well, I, I would imagine even Mac, back up. Back up anything that's important every back single up, day. Back up, back yeah, up. look, you won't regret it. In this case, being redundant doesn't hurt. Well, here's it's, the thing. I mean, Mac Mac makes it easy. How? Why? How, how? does Mac make it easier? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, so you didn't have that. Yeah, the uh, like um the time machine because it's very incremental. You're not you're not backing up an entire system each time. It just uh, gradually you know throws the changes over to your external drive, which you can set up in Linux, but it's not half as uh, which is not half as user friendly and uh, sort of classy as what um, as as how Mac pulled off. Especially when then you've got you know like versions of things that you can pull up from you know say you've lost a document that you worked on Thursday. Mm -hmm. The one you've got now is not correct, so you can go back to Thursday and pull oh. that one out and that sort of thing. So I mean, if I mean, and Ubuntu is kind of doing that now with, um, you know, with the integration of uh, Deja Dupe into their system, and you can back up to Ubuntu One. Very nice. But uh, having the incremental um, backup there, where you can just throw in the changes, not uh, just recopying all the files over again each time. Now, this piece of software, this uh, time machine, this is installed by default when you buy a Mac computer. Uh, yes, but you do have to have some sort of external storage plugged into it. Once you plug in external storage, then it'll ask you, hey, do you want to use this as a backup thing for Time Machine? And you go, of course I do, because I'm not stupid. And then they go, okay, then we'll oh. do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, why are you laughing? Like that for <laughs> I love the sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. That's classic. Yeah, we are not stupid. We will terminate all external hard drives. <laughs> you might want to actually let uh, that user know why does he put on whatever desktop interface he wants why does he put that on before he removes cinnamon and Pratt test it with the other desktop whatever he's interested in okay. so if he wants like KB or whatever just tell him to install that <laughs> yeah. uh, or hmm. another thing you could do is just download a live CD and boot it in VirtualBox and try out the desktop first before installing it to see if you're really going to like it Okay, there you go. That's, that's yeah. something I've done. Yeah, I mean, you know, you install. What you do is you just, and you know, you uh, install. Um, you install install a that desktop into a virtual machine. You know, make sure you have guest editions installed. So, you know, if it uses uh, compositing and that sort of thing, you'll be able to test it and try it out. See if it's something you're gonna like. And then if you determine that is something you're going to like, then install it. Don't just blindly install stuff, you know, um, you know, yeah. and then, you know, try them out that way. You know, you can all, you know, especially when we're talking a desktop environment. Now, a software application, let's say you download Handbrake, you don't like the transcoder, so you want to try something else. Yeah, that's easy to uninstall. But we're talking about desktops. We're talking something that's affecting your, uh, your system. You know, um, yeah, you should definitely try it out in a virtual environment or just download the live CD and uh, boot your computer off of it and play with it a little bit. Okay. There you go. So those are our responses to those two questions. Thank you for asking them. Well, we are just about at the end here now. Uh, sysadmin girl, Tanya, now she's new to this uh, sinner type of show. Now, we usually like to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Spatry. Be nice. Um, we we like to end the show like with a little high note, or I guess a low note, depending on your point of view. Yeah. High note as in a, a a brief, you know, uh, residue of humor. So Tanya, can you toss in one final funny anecdote, maybe from school, work, something in California that maybe relates right. to technology? I got it. I got it. So Spatry, put that away. Just a little joke. No, no, no. No, that's so, yeah. that's a long time ago. It's just admin joke. So, so there was these tech had their store down every Wednesday midnight, and they just couldn't figure it out. And it was happening for months and months. Every Wednesday at midnight, it would go, go down. It was, and they were troubleshooting the open cases. They just had no idea. So one of the sysadmins, on a Wednesday night, he was sitting there right in front of the computer and was like, "Why are you gonna go down?" Right? He's staring right at it. And this woman comes up to him and is like, "Oh, hi. You know, how are you doing?" It was one of the janitorial staff. And he said hello, it was polite, they had to chat. Then he watched a nice little janitorial lady go over, unplug the server, plug in her vacuum, 
back in the office. <laughs> just <laughs> turn off. Just so every Wednesday at midnight, the little tutorial lady came and cleaned, unplugged the server, and that's what the problem was. Not realizing <laughs> what you. That's that's uh, that's funny. Oh, it's this that's live. Oh gosh. Well, she was plugging in what the vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah. She would unplug the server to plug in the vacuum cleaner well, to clean the office. That's well, it's cute. it's clear it's clear what she was doing. She was sucking up all those Microsoft Windows viruses, right? <laughs> <laughs> she was their tech secret weapon, right there. <laughs> the, the old vacuum cleaner trick. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> So let this be a warning to all of you, uh, to uh, you know, to all you people running the servers. Do not let the maid near the plug. <laughs> yeah, just put like a little post-it note. Please do not touch this. Thank you, or some. Like One day you get onto, you log onto Facebook, and then all of a sudden Facebook says, "Sorry, the janitor just unplugged because she's vacuuming the office." <laughs> oh wait, wait, is that where the app Computer Janitor came Please, from? In in Linux. Minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> well. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, can I can I go back to blending now? <sighs> fine. <laughs> Play with your new. And by the way, Tanya, why Spatry had that little shaver thing? We were trying to think of a way to save Sony. Sony is like losing money and laying off, and Sony hasn't had a a killer product in years, right? So you were thinking of a his and her smartphone, something unique. I'm not sure how you would market it. Oh, his and her. Huh? Yeah. I, I don't his know, maybe one that nags the other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That would be somewhat different. But uh, anyway, it, it was just a thought. And, you know, Spatry had his little clipper thing going. But anyway, <laughs> we'll leave it there. So Yeah, a combination smartphone and electric shaver, you know. Yeah, like his and hers electric shavers. Would that work? I mean, I don't know. You know, well, smartphone well, well, combination well, I, smartphone shaver. Yeah, well, hey, all I can say is Sony's, well, I think they're still cool. They make terrific products, but they need something to really save their sinking ship. And I really, at this point, I don't know what it is. I wish them well. I mean, I grew up on Sony stuff, you know, back in New York. So, I mean, I'm, I, I remember the old commercial, Sony, no baloney or something like that. But I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a commercial back in the like 70s, and you know, like when I was a little kid. So I don't know, Sony. We, we wish you well. I, I know we're making fun of you and your smartphone. My Zona has a first name. It's O S C A R. Oh, different commercial. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, we are at the end here, folks. To another super awesome Linux A team slash Sinner report number seven. Thank you for joining us again thank you to my terrific guests awesome show you know and i think yeah, i have yeah. something new for tanya sis admin girl super awesome girl i think would work thank Just, you that's a lot better one of my yeah. Yeah. I, did, I didn't realize it, it spells out sag <laughs> that was yeah. like horrible yeah yeah i i, I was gonna say sag no I, I don't like sag but super awesome girl is good sage yeah sage. thank you yeah, we're talking you. to Sage. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Um, Sage, would you like to take us out? Oh, well, I just want to thank everyone for listening. And you guys are always awesome to talk to. And I hope to chat with you guys again in the future. And hopefully everyone tune in again for next week's episode. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you to all. Catch you next time. Goodbye. Woohoo! Bye. Yay. Bye.